Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to start a new series on this channel for animation second semester. So let's start. Just in between drawings for actual scene folder for week 1 to week 4. Here's the code for our lesson for today. So for this lesson, I'll be requiring you to create a flipbook, mini flipbook of a shape that will follow the principles that I'll be mentioning later so that I could monitor you if you are really practicing the different um, motion or animation principles that I'll be showing later. So let's start. Our objectives for today are as follows. Requirements for in-betweening, procedures for pegging and unpegging, and design standards. So let's start with requirements for in-betweening. What is in-betweening? You may post this video and write your answer on the section, uh, comment section down below. So in-betweening is basically a process of creating transitional frames between two separate objects to show the appearance of movement and evolution between the first object and the second object. Okay? This is according to Technopedia. Sa animation kasi ang ginagawa natin is we have different keyframes then basically ang ginagawa ng mga animators are putting in-between frames so that you can put your animations there. Okay, yun yung motion na pinapollow natin. Then, ang mangyayari is, yung motion na yun is going to be transition. Transitional siya. So, it means, um, every keyframes, there are different in-betweens in them. Then, steps to a perfect in-between, according to John Hopper and Michael Gagne. Okay? Here's the link. I'll put the link on the description so that you can go on the document and see the actual um, step. So first is check the timing charts. Basically, except for the exposure sheets or X sheets, there are also different markings like timing charts on your um, drawings. So basically, ang ginagawa niyan, if the first and the last one is your uh, keyframes, then basically, the lines in between are the in-betweens. So, ano ba yung mga yun? Uh, let's say, 5 frames yan. You notice here, it's divided into 5. There's a space in, there's a space before the next line. It means, wala mangyayari yung motion doon. And the frames would go on the lines that were mentioned. Depende yan on the timing charts that was given to you. Okay. Then, find the arcs. Basically, all living and non- living objects follows a circular path of action or what we call arcs. It's more natural to see if a movement is forming arcs than rather straight lines from point A to point B. Okay? So this, when you're creating an animation, as much as possible, you are forming arcs on your different objects. Okay? Then, turn on the backlight and place the drawings in flipping order. So, backlight, you may buy this one in Shopee, in Lazada. Then, it's a light that you will put at the bottom or sometimes you can DIY with your phone. Lagyan nyo lang sa baba yung ilaw, followed by your first keyframe, then your second keyframe, then your in-between. Bakit natin ilalagay sa in-between sa taas? Basically kasi, gusto natin makita paano ba yung magiging transition natin from your first keyframe to the second keyframe. Okay? Then, you will start building your in-between by placing your shapes and your lines. Okay? Between the two keys. Basically, yung in-between frame. Then, turn off the light para matapos yung drawing. Then, tip the drawings to check the in-between. Like a flipbook, check mo lang kung paano yung movement or tama ba yung mga placements ng drawings nyo. Then, rolling and checking the in-between. Again, just like the first one, roll nyo lang ng i-roll para ma-check nyo kung tama ba yung movement. This is for traditional draw, uh, traditional animation. But in um, digital animation, you will just play the frames. 
Then turn on the backlight again for you to continue. And why is it also needed to be turned on? Basically, you will need to check the frames, the volumes of your character, the volumes and details of your objects. Itanggalin nyo sila sa peg bar, then you uh, angle them so that pakita nyo kung tama ba yung size ng ulo, tama ba yung size ng kamay, so on and so forth. Then do a final check of the in-between, again by rolling through and clipping the drawings. Then let's go to procedures for pegging and unpegging. So what is a peg bar? You may post this video and write your answer on the comment section. So basically a peg bar is a piece of plastic or uh, wood na merong mga pegs, kaya siya tinawag na peg bar. Ang use ng pegs yan is to hold the paper in place at mas madali mo siyang matanggal if needed to. Okay, ginagamit to sa mga drafting tables, animation tables, or light boxes. Okay, so ang gagawin yan is pantay-pantay yung paper tapos hindi ka mahirap ang mag-drawing. It's either on the top portion or the bottom portion of your uh, paper depending on the requirements of your company or even your personal um, personal preference. So, paano ba tanggalin? So, basically, lalagay ko lang, ipapunch ko lang, dapat same size of same distance, same size of holes. Then, you just put it there, uh, insert it on the peg, then remove it. Just like that. Easy lang. So, para ka lang naglalagay ng uh, paper sa isang uh, fastener. Yan lang ang concept niya. Then, design standards. Again, the link is here. I'll put it in the description down below so that you can go on them. So, basic design principles are as follows. Balance, emphasis, rhythm, contrast, harmony, pattern, proportion, repetition, and variety. These are the same basic design principles that will be discussed to you in your animation uh, illustration class. Okay, so I'll not go deeper onto them. We'll go deeper in animation principles and motion design. Again, I'll be requiring you to submit um, flipbook type, medyo maliit na flipbook lang, showing the different principles of animation principles here. Okay, the first principle that you'll be creating is squash and stretch. Basically, um, it's like an after image. Kapag horizontal yan, ang, ang stretch is like a uh, uh, after image of an object, okay? Kapag mabilis na object from moving left to right, ang mangyayari is, um, tawag dito, para siyang bumabanat. Okay? Then when it stops, it goes back to its original shape. Okay? The after image, yun yung magiging illusion mo na nag-move ang isang object. Yun yung squash and stretch. But for falling objects naman, when it hits the bottom part, it will not just stay as it is, but rather it will squash then when it's going back up, it retains its shape by stretching it, okay? So you may pose this video to practice your squash and stretch using your shape that you selected. Then we have staging. Staging is basically placing or the arrangement of your objects depending on what is the um, tawag dito? Um, kung gusto mo ba siyang makakuha ng attention ng audience mo. Let's say kung siya yung gusto mong makuha na attention or emphasis, you put it in front, it has a bigger shape. But if it's not, lalagay mo siya sa likod which has the smaller shape. Okay? So you may pause this video to practice your staging principle. Then anticipation. We mentioned this one on our first semester lesson. Okay? There's a Japanese term for this one. Again, lots of physics is like what I mentioned kanina. A car will not move fast unless it starts on a slow pace, builds its momentum, and it will not stop in on place, but rather it will it will slow down hanggang mag stop siya. Okay, that is anticipation. Okay, you may pause this video and practice your anticipation animations. Then straight ahead and post to post. Basically, this is the concept of traditional animation, wherein you will be creating motion frame by frame. 
Then follow through and overlapping. Basically, physics ulit, everything has physics in them. When there's a motion, it will not stop unless there's a force that will stop it. Okay, so basically, if you notice the box here with the word sail, it is unnatural na mag-stop lang siya bigla. But rather, it's, a, it's realistic if the tag is still moving until it stops. Kasi wala na siyang force na apply sa kanya. Sa animation, ganun din. You need to take into consideration the secondary movements. Later on, we'll talk about them. The secondary movements and how they will react on them. How the main object and the secondary objects will react on each other. Okay, just like the box and the seal tag. You may post a video to practice your overlapping and uh, overlapping and follow through principle. Then slow in and slow out. Again, it hindi siya mabilis agad but rather slow yung pag start niya. Then slow ang pag stop niya. Okay, it's the same principle again. Physics ulit to. So you may uh, parehas lang siya sa anticipation. Okay? You may stop or post the video here to practice your slow in and slow out. Arcs. Again, arcs are natural. Okay? So when you are creating animation, you need to take into consideration the different arcs that will be used on your animation. Okay? So for example, the airplane here, mas natural siya tingnan if it's going up and down. Unlike the straight and hindi siya boring. This smooth and fluid animation with this one. So you may pause your, the video and practice your arts, your art animations. Then secondary actions. Again, I mentioned this one kanina with the overlap and follow through. Wherein there are different reactions for every action. Okay. So for example, the clock here. Hindi lang naman siya nag-up and down, but rather it's a clock, the hand should move. Once it goes on the top, which is like an alarm, it will start clicking. Also the small, small hand. Gumagalaw ang big hand, then the small hand, gagalaw din siya. Depende yan. Kasi parehas din sa motion ng isang real clock. Okay, remember, you need to consider this one also. Hindi lang siya nakastop bigla. Okay? Or hindi lang siya bigla biglang gagalaw. And may post a video to practice your secondary actions. Then timing. Timing is everything. Okay? Remember your frame per second. Okay? For digital animation, you may adjust the frame per second. But for a traditional animation, basically, a frame per second is the number of drawings that you will put in between each key frames. So that, per second, ah, per second, so that you may create a motion. So if you want a slow motion, basically, mas maraming hindi gumagalaw. Wala, mas maraming walang motion. Okay? So, depende yan sa inyong frame per second. Remember, mas fluid the motion, mas realistic ang movement. So you may post a video here to practice your timings for this one. Then we have exaggeration. Exaggeration is giving emphasis. Okay? Making out loud that it stands out. Okay? So if you notice on the clip here, sa normal, okay, pare-pares ang shape, nag iba lang color. But it will stand out more if you give additional movements, like just like the upper portion. The box, start, uh, mas malaki yung box, nagkaroon ng additional movements, nagkaroon ng ibang color, nagkaroon ng ibang shape when it goes out. So, yung focus mo is on the golden box now because of those additional movements. You may pause this video to practice your exaggeration principles. Then solid drawings. Again, um, kapag sa solid drawing, basically yung depth and the volume. Sa 3D animation, madali lang yan eh. Sa 2D animation, medyo mahirap. So what you will do is, if you want to give emphasis, you make it a solid color. Para mas malapit. If you want to put it at the back, at hindi siya in focus, you may blur it out. Okay? Tapos, mas maliit yung shape niya. You may post this video to practice your solid drawing principle. Then, let's have a review. How can you produce a perfect in-between drawings? You may post this video and write your answer in the comment section. How do you peg and unpeg 
our drawings in the pet bar. You may post this video again and write your answer on the comment section. Then, what are the animation principles to consider when doing animation? And, you may post this video and write your answers on the comments. So let's have a reflection. How would this knowledge help you with your future career as an animator? You may post this video and write your answer on the comments section. Okay, that's that wraps up our lesson for this week. Don't forget to ask your teacher. You may send me a message in Facebook or you may send a, a question at our podcast. Okay. So again, don't forget your um, clipbooks to be submitted together with your CBI project. Again, see you next time for our next lesson.